Cause we is back once again with another reaction video, bruh. And today I'm coming back with another reaction for y'all head, man. And hey, hey, I got another little video for y'all, bruh. Y'all already know what time it is. Mr. Nightmare bringing some more stories once again. Three disturbing true block party stories, man. We got to react to that. We got three stories we're about to be reacting to, man. We got to see what is going, what's about to be going on in these stories. If it's going to be scary or not. Getting back to the scary, uh, the scary grind and the scary story grind, man. I'm about to react, be, uh, react to. I haven't reacted to it in a while, actually. And um, yeah, so I'm about to be coming back to this. Hopefully, you guys enjoy, man. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel already, you guys already know what to do. Go down, subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it, man. Thanks for all my returning subscribers. Thanks for all my, uh, all my new subscribers that's been subscribing to the channel. The channel's going crazy, man. We're about to go ahead and keep grinding and keep going and keep going and keep getting lit. You guys already know what it is. Let's go, man. Go down, like, and subscribe to the channel down below for more reactions. Let's get it. And if you guys don't subscribe to the channel, man, that's all right. At least hit the like button, bro. Let's go. I think we got this thing. Is, I think it's gonna be three. Yeah, it's gonna be three scary stories, man. Let's see what this first one about. I live on Long Island, New York. When I was a kid, our block used to throw a yearly block party. Yeah, I had block a party. friends on the block that were in my grade, Mike and Danny. We would always hang out together at these block parties. My neighbors would go all out. There would be tables of baked goods, catered food. Some neighbors even had tables of alcohol out. Hmm. Of course, we were like 13. No one was going to let us drink at that age. Some kids do. It's crazy. It was Saturday. And people were setting up for the block used to. party early in the day. The street was already closed hmm. off. It didn't really pick up until around 3. The three of us invited some other friends to come. And most of the day, we were just messing around bro. in the blow-up attractions. Or just bro, look at this right here, bro. This looks so fun. If you guys um like ever experienced like black parties or just get-togethers... It's kind of it's kind of fun. I think I've been to one black party. I think. Uh, but anyways, man, we we'll have to continue to the story, man. It's just a nice, you know what I'm saying? It's a great event to attend. So. Just eating people's baked goods. Eventually, some of our other friends left, and it got dark. But the party wouldn't end until late at night. Mm -hmm. Danny and I started joking about how I could beat him at MLB, and while Mike and one of our <laughs> other friends named Steve were somewhere else. <laughs> That's funny. Who comes? He said we were just joking and the clown and see. If he, who if who can beat who at, at MLB? I just react to an MLB. Never mind. This is this is that's completely off topic. Else on the block. Let's continue. Danny and I decided to take a break from the block party and play each other in MLB. MLB. About an hour later, we went back outside to look for Mike and Steve. We ran into Steve, who said Mike went into his house like forever ago and didn't come out. Hmm. So we walked through the block party down to Mike's house and saw his parents, who told us he went inside. We saw his bedroom light was on, and he was standing at his window. We started waving at him to come down. That's not Steve. It didn't seem like he even noticed us, though. Weird. Screaming over the blasting music would be kind of useless. So instead, they I said, went let's up. just go inside his house. We walked over to the stoop and tried the door, but it was locked. So we went around back to try the back door. This one was actually unlocked, so we let ourselves in to find Mike and tell him to come back outside. Naturally, we went right up the stairs towards his room. His door was cracked open, and naturally I went to push it open, expecting him to be in there. Instead, there was this tall man standing by the window looking outside, his hands resting on the window Told sill. You. I backed up away from the door, frightened, but more so confused. I knew Mike's family, and I had no idea who this guy was. I backed away from the door and signaled for the other two to be quiet. I told them to go downstairs in as quiet a voice as I could. We didn't know if that was one of Mike's relatives or not, but either way, it was rude of us to barge into Mike's house like that, and we didn't want any relatives we didn't know to catch us. We left and went outside back to Mike's parents to ask who the man inside at the window was. They looked up at the window of their son's bedroom, and nobody and Mike's was mom there. let out a short scream, followed by his dad running towards the house to unlock the front door. Oh, we watched my. as the man standing at the window turned and disappeared. <laughs> yeah. in anticipation. Yeah, that's creepy. That's the creepy. crowd started to form, and it became a scene as people were asking what was going on. Five minutes later, Mike and his dad came outside to the crowd. He had already called the cops. 
Mike was apparently hiding in his closet after he saw a random man from his room walking up the oh, stairs. Oh my gosh. The block party was shut down early, and the cops pulled up briefly. They searched the house with Mike's dad, but couldn't find a man anywhere. See, that's, that's what I'm saying. Bro, if you had, if it's a block party, everybody's going to be out their houses. You know what I'm saying? So, of course, can something like this can happen. It easily can happen. Whereas, like, this is a black party. Everybody's everybody's attraction is outside. You know what I'm saying? At the little get-together. And then you got this type of guy sneaking to, like, their house or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's scary. Going it's creepy. Going night, scared shitless. And I could only imagine at the time how scared I must have been. And you're only, like, 13, 15 or something like that? I woke up in the middle of the night, and my mouth was really dry. So I went downstairs to get some. So the same night? Okay. As I shut the fridge... I noticed something through the curtain in the kitchen. There's a light on the side of the house above the kitchen window that stays on all night. And it was exposing some shadow that wasn't usually there, shaped like a person. I knew better than to lift that curtain. I went straight to my parents' room and woke my dad up, who heard about the event that took place earlier down the street. He came down to look, but when we got to the kitchen, the shadow outside the window was gone, which confirmed it was a person. My dad went outside to run around the property real quick, finding no one. I don't know if he fully took me seriously and believed I saw a shadow, because for some reason he didn't want to call the cops. Hmm. I like to think I'm pretty sure that was the same man outside the window that night. What were the chances there could be such a coincidence that same night? I slept with one eye open that night. <laughs> that it? All right, that's story number one. Let me you guys know what you think of story number one. It was definitely creepy, but I don't think it was the scariest, man. Let's see what, let's see what uh, story two got. Something very traumatizing happened to me when I was a very little kid. I was like five or six. A nearby street was having a block party, which is basically just where a block is closed off to traffic and all of the neighbors on the street chip in for food and activities. Mm -hmm. My older Free brother, food. who was like 11 or 12, took me with him to this block party. It was a weekend, so our parents were a little more lenient with the curfew. My brother oh, yeah, apparently yeah. had some friends on this block, and he met up with them, with me following behind him. I remember him introducing me to some of his friends. But I was a really shy kid, so I didn't really say much to them. Most of the night was a blur, because it was just so long ago. But somehow, I got separated from my brother. At such a young age... I remember panicking that I was lost. I was looking around everywhere for my brother. Eventually, I bumped into some tall old man, and he knelt down and asked me something along the lines of, where was my family? Then he said he didn't recognize me from the street. I told him I was there with my brother, but I lost him. He started acting all concerned, and told me to come with him to his house so he could call my parents. Mm -hmm. I was naive and I followed him, mm -hmm. ignoring the words of any parents. Don't That's talk to strangers. Child predator right there. If he asks, "Where's your parents?" and you're obviously you're lost, you're just a hopeless, lost. You know what I'm saying? Unbound kid. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, that's a child predator, and that's just a red flag, man. It's a red flag. He led me through the crowd as I held his hand. Never go into a stranger's house. Once inside, he looked at me and smiled, and asked if I wanted any snacks. See, soften him up. My head shyly. He went to his pantry and grabbed a bag of chips. <laughs> then he told me to follow him upstairs. He led me to a small bedroom upstairs and told me to sit on the bed as he pulled up a chair in front of me and just sat down. He told me to eat the chips, but I didn't. I nervously asked him to call my parents. So weird. So I creepy. He said he would in a moment. Give me shivers down my spine. I can't remember whatever <laughs> yeah. creepy stuff he may have said. But he eventually made his way off the chair and onto the bed next to me, making no signs of trying to make the phone call to my parents. Yeah. He put his arm around my shoulders, and that's when the doorbell rang. And it was the most relieving sound I could have imagined. He looked at I me bet. and told me to wait there. You better run out. Of course, out. when the old man got downstairs and opened the front door, I ran downstairs seeking the aid of whoever was at the door, and it happened to be my brother, his friends, and a couple of adults. Ooh. My brother was told by someone that I was seen entering the old man's house. Mm -hmm. My brother and the adults questioned the old man and I, mostly asking me why he brought me into his house. Yeah. I gave my best six-year-old detailed description I could. Six-year-old detail. It probably was enough for everyone to realize what might have been about to go down. One of the adults Ooh. brought my brother and I to her house, where she called my parents and then the police. 
My mom and dad were over in a heartbeat, and the cops followed shortly. I asked my mom and dad before writing this what I said that got the cops to arrest the old man, and it was simply that I said the old man lied about calling my parents and started touching me. Yeah. I didn't ask my parents anything else, because quite frankly, I don't like talking you didn't know. about it too much. Yep, you didn't know. I was grateful things worked out the way they did, because I'm sure they were about to go very south. <laughs> Story number two is the best one. Bro, that's the creepiest one. Story number two, hands down, bro. Like, that just let you know, man. Like, he he didn't know, you know what I'm saying? Didn't know where, the, where his brother was. Didn't know where his parents was at. And he was just naive. You know what I'm saying? He followed the old man to his house. And there you go. Luckily, the brother, that was a changer, right? I didn't know who was at that doorbell. But I was like, yes, thank God. It was his brother and his friends and his mom and his parents. And I was like, yes, you know what I'm saying? Because that's that's crazy, that's scary, that's that's crazy. Who knows what what, what would have happened to him? You know what I'm saying? If that doorbell didn't ring, and he's and somebody caught him, somebody caught him walking to it, like walking to his house. So that's what saved him. Story number two hands down the be better one than story number one. I mean, story number one was like, eh, okay, somebody walked in your house, an intruder. First and only one ever to date. Our block sits right in front of a small section. Story number of three, last one. So woods connect my and some of my neighbors' yards. During the block party, some of us started getting bored because it was mostly catered to the younger kids of the block. In the woods. So there was this one creepy, shady guy walking around the block. He had some big can like thing in his hands, and he kept spouting gibberish to people. <laughs> Eventually, he came up to my friends and I and started saying the most random shit that honestly wasn't even coherent. We just walked away, assuming he was on drugs. Pretty soon after, five of my neighbors and I were down to play a game of manhunt with the field of play man, ranging from one house across the block party to the woods behind Ooh, the house. Ooh, that's how fun, street. man. I was on Jess and Kenny's team. We started in my backyard. The rule was we all had to hide in different places. So I told them I'd hide in the woods and try to sneak my way around the houses through the woods. And I suggested different hiding spots for them. Bro, I think I remember playing manhunts, bro. I'm trying to think of this game right now, bro. I think it was like a field trip or something where we went into the woods. I think it was manhunt. Cause you, it was like we hide in the woods and we like and we hunt. Bro, it was manhunt, bro. I just remember, bro. Excuse me, I'm having a little bit of a nostalgia moment, man. Cause, dang, I think I, I'm trying to remember which field trip was that. But bro, I remember playing. It's a lot of fun. Like playing manhood is a lot of fun, man. I waited in the. Like, it just bring, it just, just brought back that memory. When the other team entered my backyard. Eventually, one of them snuck into the yard, and that's when I thought it was safe to start migrating. Oh, what it was like to As be I a kid along, again. I started noticing some paint-like marks on a bunch of trees. They appeared to be big red X's, and in that immediate area, made of blood. About every big tree <laughs> had an X. It's like nah. I heard screaming from the yard in front of me, meaning someone from the other team was chasing Kenny. So I ducked down and held position for a few. As I was idle in that position, I started hearing footsteps deeper in the woods, and I heard a spraying-like sound. But the noise stopped before I could even turn around. What the? I realized there was someone standing over there, deeper this... in the woods. The lights from the nearby houses was just enough to see him. He was looking at me. Apparently he stopped what he was doing when he spotted me. He started walking over to me, and I realized when he got closer that it was that creepy, crazy seeming dude from earlier. Suddenly that kid Better was run. sense. When he was like 10 feet away, he started speaking. He kept saying, X marks the spot, X marks the spot. I told him to fuck off as I turned and ran back to my backyard. No one was back there anymore. So I ran to find my friends in the block party and told them the game was off and explained what I just witnessed. So all six of us together marched back to the woods behind my backyard, and we started looking for him. He was nowhere to be found, but I did show my friends all the red X's he sprayed on the trees. I showed it to my dad later in the night when the block party was over. He told me there's nothing we could really do about it, to just get a good night's rest. That night I had a bad dream. It was about that creepy man from the woods. In this dream, he would just keep chasing me through the woods as I heard his creepy voice saying, X marks the spot. Then I would hear him spraying his can of spray paint. And that's yes. when I woke up. 
so strange. In a pitch black room. I looked at the clock, and it was only like one or two in the morning. Then, on the other side of my window, right above my bed, there was someone talking. Yeah, Jibber Jabbers? jumped. Just the old I man. looked out the window, and there was a big red X painted right in the center of it. And behind that was the crazy man with the can. Dude, what the? I heard him saying X marks the spot over and over. See, that's that's like a mind. That's like a mind. You know what I'm saying? A mind. He started like hitting flicks. the window with his elbow, clearly trying to break it. I ran to get my dad, who's a huge burly dude. He looked out my window and saw the nut job still games. hitting the glass, which had yet to crack. Surprisingly, my dad started yelling taunts at the man, like he better be ready for an ass beating. <laughs> then my dad ran out of the room for the front door. I think it worked in scaring that whack job off because he stopped what he was doing and ran away. When my dad got to my window, I pointed at him in the right direction and he ran off down the block. He was gone for a while. He didn't come back for like 10 minutes. Uh oh. He couldn't find the guy, but judging by the size of that crazy man, I know my dad could have pummeled him to the ground. And I wish I saw it happen. The story doesn't end there, however. The reason I decided to tell the story now in 2019 because just a few days ago, there was a big red axe drawn on our front door, <laughs> as well as a bunch of trees in the woods in our backyard. What? Two nights ago, I even heard footsteps passing my bedroom window at some odd hour in the night. We don't have cameras, but my dad is thinking about installing some now. If anything Dang. else happens, I will update. True. That's what I'm saying. That's why you're putting the titles. True. Scary. Stories by Mr. Nightmare Man. This that was crazy. See, he said he even told that story for a reason, bro. This was true live events, bro. About some guy talking about some X marks to spot, bro. Whatever that means, bro. We don't know, but that, that was that's crazy. Thanks for sharing, Mr. Nightmare. <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> I was just playing. Anyways, that was that, man. We back on that Mr. Nightmare grind, bro. Three disturbing weird that last one was like a mind games type of you know what i'm saying weird like weird like weirdness like this like mind games bro for that last one definitely the second one was the best one the second one bro that was the best one bro like it's crazy man i like i like the I, like the first one was eh, i think it was like three and my and like the best to last was like the the best one was three then it was two then it was one right no two three one two three one two three one for, uh, for that order, man. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed that reaction. Um, I'm gonna, be, I'm gonna uh, come back with some more uh, videos for you guys. Make to stay tuned on the channel and look out for that, man. I really do appreciate you guys for um, watching all the way up until the end, if you have. And I hope you guys uh, subscribe to the channel and join me in the next one. Leave, uh, leave me some comments down below. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think of this video. Uh, what was you guys' favorite story? If you guys enjoyed it, man, I'm gonna be reacting to some more of these, of course. Um, yeah, man, let's get it. Go down, like, and subscribe to the channel down below for more reactions. Let's get it. And if you guys don't subscribe to the channel, that's all right. At least hit the like button, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Dang. At least y'all can do it.